Hi, everybody. We are live with a new perspective. And if you've been following me at all, you know that a new perspective is the conversation that I like to have with like-minded people who see the world a little bit differently. So it's all about people who, you know, can take a look at chaos and really find the opportunity in it, or they're looking at the diamond in the rough and they they try to bring them along with them. So I am here today with Eric Olson and I will introduce him in one minute, um, but I am Amanda Herr. I'm president of Digital Desk and Digital Desk is a um, digital marketing virtual assistant agency. And what we do is we take the digital marketing off of your desk so that you can get back to what you do best. So with that, um, I wanna introduce you to my friend and soon to be yours, Eric Olson. Eric is the author of the upcoming book, um, A Million Dollar Journey. So do you wanna talk a little bit, uh, just to give a brief little like, look into what that book is? I'd love to. Well, thanks for having me on first, I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to have you. We just, okay, for everybody that didn't see the beforehand in the green room, as it were, we started talking and I feel like I could talk to Eric for probably, uh, you know, hours about digital marketing and anything nerdy. So um, if we if we get off on a tangent, I'll try to bring us back. But uh, Eric is a great guy and he's got a lot to say. So Eric, I'm, again, let's talk a little bit, give us a little snippet about the book. And then I want to talk to you a little bit about your past. Okay. Yeah, you got it. So uh, yeah, Amanda, you and I have, uh, it seems like very similar um, past as far as business goes and pivoting and trying to find the right fit for us and for our clients. Yeah. And so um, just like with you, you know, my, my story goes back uh, a decent ways. I've been self-employed for 11 years and I started off um, literally at the dining room table with a backpack and I, I would open it in the morning, pull out the laptop, have my cell phone. And if I had internet connectivity, I was in business. Yeah. And I did that for, uh, about a year or so before I hired my first employee and started to work on really building the business. But I had a lot of false starts and a lot of uh, a lot of mistakes, just so many mistakes. It took us eight years before we built our revenue up to a million dollars every single year. So um, that, you know, just a tremendous number of lessons learned. We're past that at this point, uh, three years past that. But looking back at the million dollar mark, it, it was pivotal for us for, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, it's just cool to say, uh, it doesn't mean that I have to say, let me just say, as I said, prior to us starting, like, I'm glad to know you and teach me, teach me. So yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I love the million dollar. It's cool to say, and I want to know, I want to be able to say it. So go ahead. It's, look, it's, it's cool to say, but that's, you know, you, you could make a million dollars in your business a year and still lose money. Like there are lots of people that do that. So, you know, million dollars in top line revenue does not mean you're making good money at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so the goal is obviously to be profitable as well. There's more than right. just the absolute revenue. Um, so it's, it's cool to say it's a nice round number. It's, it's a nice thing to aim for. Uh, but then really third, what I found out was that only 4% of businesses in the United States get to that point, which means that 96% of businesses struggle trying to get there or die trying, or in some cases, the business owners just don't even care about it. Uh, I think for the business owners, that's you know kind of like wave it off that it's not something they want. They may have just got to the point where they're just not interested in growing because they can't. Right. So or just, yeah, frustration. Period. Out of frustration, right? Yeah. So, so the, the the book is really about the journey and what it took to get up to eight to a million dollars a year over those eight years. Because I know from all the lessons learned that I put into the book and that my team and I have discussed that if we started another company right now, it'd probably take us three to four years to break a million dollars. So there's a, just a tremendous amount of experience that can be gained by going through that process. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to reduce all that down to a book. It's called Million Dollar Journey. It's currently in editing. It'll be coming out in January. That's, I, first of all, like kudos to you. Congratulations on writing the book. Um, obviously, congratulations on reaching that million dollar mark. I know, as you said, it it didn't come overnight. Um, we, as we discussed, there's been iterations and pivots involved. So let's talk a little bit about um, about you and and your life and um, how you came to be the the person, the author of a million dollar journey. So can you tell us a little bit of like where did you grow up? 
Ah, we're going way back. Yeah, way back. we're going to go way, way back. Yeah. Okay, sure. So my dad was uh, Air Force, and that means that we bounced around a little bit. When I was younger, I lived in Spain for two years. I lived in California for two different times. Uh, the last time was uh, four years uh, outside of Sacramento in a little suburb mm -hmm. called Citrus Heights. Sounds and then actually we, very nice, yeah. We ended up moving to um, Northern Virginia, Fairfax County. And when I was in seventh grade, and so I've been in Virginia since then. Uh, went went through high school, uh, went to Virginia Tech, and I I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do, but I was I was really good at math, and so I majored in engineering, and uh, became a civil engineer. And when I got out of school, I did that for six years. So that's that's career number one. Oh. I well, I was gonna say my eyes just went up like, okay, um, you're in yeah. a creative field. Not that civil engineers can't be creative, but my brother's an engineer, and God love him. You send him to the store for milk, he comes back with you know like a dog. Yeah. So like, right. there's just no you know. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I'm different. like, wow, it's, what a pivot. That's a pivot. It's it's problem solving, right? So yes. what okay. engineering yeah. teaches you is how to solve a problem, and in engineering's case, very specific kinds of problems. Yes. So I did that for six years and uh, ended up moving to the Virginia Beach, Virginia area during mm -hmm. that, that time frame. Um, and I, I just got frustrated with construction. I was a construction project manager and I got very frustrated with construction because, uh, you know, I, I could have great plans and come up with great contracts and all that. But at the end of the day, I was relying on uh, a construction worker to put up drywall properly. I'm, I'm trying to point. I don't know if you can see my hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. Well, I can't, but maybe they can. So yeah. And and that was actually an example where like one of the guys on the crew like totally messed up the drywall and I was so frustrated and uh, it kind of got me thinking like, I don't know if I want to do this the rest of my life. And um, in, at Virginia Tech, I had taken some uh, computer courses and they taught us some basic computer programming and uh, the internet was going nuts and all my friends were making like hundreds of millions of dollars coding. And I'm like, you know what? Let's try this internet thing. And so I, I built, I taught myself how to code appropriately to build a website uh, that is extremely similar to Angie's List now. Angie's List didn't exist then, but it, the concept right. was uh, pair homeowners with contractors. And I, I launched it and it, it was a terrible failure because uh, I didn't market it at all. I didn't know anything about marketing. Mm. I could code, but I couldn't market. Um, and it ended up failing. And and then I, I tried that again with another idea, Think mm. Etsy. So okay. uh, before Etsy came about, I built something very similar to that. I made the same mistake. I didn't market it at all. And I started to think like, you know, that building it is not quite enough you need to actually market this thing. So when I, when I build products in the future, I would build in marketing. Yeah. And when I went off on my own, uh, 11 years ago is when I started working for myself, I was doing software development. Okay. Uh, but then I realized we needed marketing. So we started to tell our clients, you like as much as you spend with us, you need to set aside to market this thing that we're building for you or else it's going to be a failure. Yeah. I'm sorry. That is just beautiful because I do find that, and I talk to my clients all the time, you can have the best thing in the world, but if you don't tell anybody about it, then it's going right. to fail. And, um, you know, and I, I know that they're scared to jump on board and digitally market or market at all, really. And you have to kind of like baby step them into it. But once they see the power of the marketing, they go, oh, that's what was missing. So I'm sorry. Right. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. and, and as as uh, as an engineer, a past engineer, um, you know, like software engineers in particular, like they're very critical when it comes to um, how good the product is. Mm -hmm. uh, as for, and, but it's very subjective too. So uh, it can be very frustrating for engineers to see an inferior product do better in the marketplace. Yeah. Why is that? Well, it comes down to marketing, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I kept I kept making the same mistake, and I kept seeing how these inferior products were doing better than you know, superior products when it came to the technical aspects. Mm -hmm. Started telling our clients, you need to market this. We started to do a little bit of marketing, ended up hiring a digital marketer. And that's that was about almost four years ago now. 
And that was when we really started to get really deep into digital marketing. Mm -hmm. And at first I was very skeptical about digital marketing. I did not understand how things like SEO worked. Right. And, and I, I really like, it was weird to me because clients were paying us and I didn't know if we were adding value or not. And so I asked just a ton of questions mm -hmm. and I read up and uh, every blog post that was ever created for like a one year span, I read and I watched videos and I went to conferences and I learned this stuff inside and out. And, and that was like a, just a great schooling for me is just trying to figure out like, is this even valuable? Right. And the answer that I concluded with was yes, digital marketing is valuable. As a matter of fact, it's more valuable than the product itself. So the product is usually a one-time build, especially for things like a, a website in most cases yeah. for most people or like a mobile app, but you right. have to continue to market that thing to make sure that people come in and oh, then absolutely. you're replacing the people that leave. And so the marketing was like, if you don't market, you're done. You know? Well, so. yeah, absolutely. And digital marketing in particular, but marketing overall, I mean, you can have the, like I said, the best widget, but if no one knows about your widget, then like you said, you know, you created the Etsy before it was Etsy and, and it failed. Think about what that could have been. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's nothing more, um, tangible than the results that you can get and and you can't I, I love tv get don't get me wrong i mean I, I think it has like a place in the world it's my baby cnn and everything but you, as part of a marketing mix but digital marketing if you don't have even like taking money from tv or some of the more traditional and moving into digital marketing because you can actually build a relationship with somebody that feels like, and it is really a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a brand mm -hmm. just by using digital marketing. And people yeah. always think, what do you mean you can, isn't it impersonal? It can be so personal and you can literally down to the penny, figure out what yeah. worked and didn't work. And that's, yeah. that's where I get excited, but yeah, you, you I don't nerd out on you, Eric, not yet. No, no, but. I, I totally <laughs> agree. And, uh, you know, when it comes to TV, um, TV is yeah. certainly morphing broadcast TV mm -hmm. is, you know, like it or not, it's it's on its way out, but it's being replaced with other kinds of TV, right? Definitely. So there's over the top television, which mm -hmm. is streamed through the internet, and yeah. uh, the analytics are getting better and better. Absolutely. So, um, you know, like there, there's um, gather. Just think what we can do, right? Absolutely. So, like uh, yeah. as an example, uh, Hulu uh, just yes. very recently came out with self service advertising, which mm -hmm. is similar to like say Facebook, where right. uh, anyone, me, you, anyone who's watching, can go on to Hulu and they could create their own ads right now if they want. That's a big breakthrough, right? Yes. And we're going to see a lot more uh, streaming TV services provide that in the future. Peacock has also just came out. And then Turner Broadcasting is actually providing the same type of thing um, that Hulu is providing to their clients. And they're also doing things that are very, very different. They've been working on this for years. They were doing that while I, while I was there. But it's amazing to me that video, I think that content will always be king. So if it's good content, people will stop, engage and watch. Um, but video is gonna be playing such a big role um, just across the board. Yeah. But I interrupted no. you, so let's-, no, let's no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, totally, I totally agree with you. I, I think uh, TV's not going anywhere, but it is no. shifting for sure. Absolutely. And then, and then a lot of that content, that uh, that TV content is now ending up in apps. So like a Quibi, right? Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the new one that they're, they're kind of struggling. They, they launched at a bad time, but YouTube, um, uh, you, you name the streaming app and uh, and there, there's television kinds of content out there. And then, right. and then places like Facebook, you know, Facebook watch, um, yeah. like mm -hmm. over time, it's just going to become ubiquitous. Like it doesn't matter where you get it. You don't need to, click on the TV anymore, or you won't have to, it'll yeah. just be everywhere. They don't even know the station that they're watching. They just know that they like the content. That's right. That's yeah. it. And if you have good content, people are going to come. Now, the one thing is for the people watching today and for, for my audience, and I'm sure for, I'm not sure for yours, um, who you're working with, but for my audience, it's important to note too, that you don't have to be General Motors or Ford or PNG. You as, that's the exciting part for me, you as a business owner in Michigan or a business owner across the US who has, you know, maybe moderate revenue, 
to high revenue, but you're not as big as those giant corporations or even the smallest guy, um, you can get out there even as an entrepreneur like myself and yeah. you can be a part of these platforms. And that's the amazing thing. And you can localize everything. So I always tell my clients, you know, don't be afraid to try something because A, it doesn't take me a month to pull it down if it's not working. That's right. But B, the, the creative that I'm going to create for you isn't going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars either. And C, you're going to be creating a completely different, more personal conversation than you ever would have dreamed of. It's like it's as if you were talking to someone who walked through your, your business door. Yeah. So I don't want people who are watching today to only think it's for the big dogs. It's for everybody. And if you do it right it can yeah. change everything for you. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. Uh, it's wide open right now. Uh, th there's, there's no admission to a lot of these platforms, Facebook, Twitter, right. Instagram, LinkedIn, they're all free. It's right. just a matter of, um, well, in some cases it's going to cost you to create the content. So there is, you know, some, yes. some expense, but, but it's minimal. If, yeah, but, but that's, that's what businesses do, right? They, they spend mm -hmm. their revenue dollars and they put it, they invest it back into the business in the form of marketing and advertising. So, if you're unwilling to do, you know, like let's say pay for content for Facebook, if you're unwilling to do that, then, then you really have to question, well, are, is this company even willing to market and advertise themselves? And if they're not like, what's your plan to grow? Right. right? So it's, and it's just, it's not adequate to just post when you think of it once every two or three yeah. months. And so many business owners, they've got so much going on. I mean, I've yes. got, I, yesterday I had it like my goal for yesterday was to open the mail. That was like the big priority because it had stacked up for like two months. And I knew that there was a whole bunch of ticking time bombs in there, like bills that I had to pay. And I'm like, ah, I just don't want to do right. it. All of a sudden but, they come to get your car and you're like, why? <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you see me walking around town, that's why. Yeah, then You know why? Right. But like, I mean, we just, there's so much to do where you're like, you know, coming up with something clever to say on Facebook is the last thing you want to do. Right. And so it's, it's, it's not even the last thing you just don't want to do it. So right. it's, but you have to be out where people are. So yeah, if absolutely. people are on Facebook, which they are, mm -hmm. and they're spending time on places like Facebook, which they are three hours a day, every single day, yeah. which is crazy on average, I know. then you need to be there. Right. Mm -hmm. And and if you're not, then you're you're just not going to get the attention that your competitors are. So if you're going to market or advertise your business, and if you don't, you really need to question what you're doing. Are you in business? Is my yeah. Question. Yeah. Right. Like well, what what's your real goal here? So Absolutely. if you're going to market or advertise, then you need to be on a place like Facebook, which it means you need to hire someone for you, like Amanda Absolutely. or me to yes. help make content. <laughs> Absolutely. Or both of us, Eric. <laughs> So tell us a little bit. Thank you for nerding out with me for a moment. Um, now, Kevin, Kevin Daisy says profit first, by the way, he is talking about when we were talking about the hundred million or the hundred million, the million, let's get to a hundred million, but the million dollar journey. Tell yeah. us a lot about your book. Um, what can we expect? Is there, sure. you know, what type of content are we going to be looking at? Sure. Yeah. So, so the book is called a million dollar journey. It doesn't come out until January. I have written it. Um, and it's, it's going to be edited in the month of August. And I just, this is my first book. There's a lot of things that I'm learning about uh, book publishing that I didn't know. Okay. Uh, like what? Well, like, like there's a lot of different kinds of editors. Like I just learned that. So for a long time, I was like, I need an editor, but I need someone that's going to like find the typos of course, yeah. but also I need someone that's going to like kind of reorganize it and tell me like, Hey, chapter seven sucks. Get rid of it. Right. Right. So you need to write a new chapter up here and move this section. Th those are different kinds of editing styles. There's developmental editing, which is right. like the chapter. And then there's copy editing. So it's been interesting for me I, and I'm kind of doing it the hard way, honestly, uh, on purpose, because I, I want to learn about the industry. I, this won't be my last book. Right. Uh, so uh, it's, it's taken a little bit longer than, than if I were to plunk down, 10 or $20,000 and just have someone do it for me. But I, I want to learn the process. The, the, the book is about uh, all the lessons learned to get from zero to 100 million or to $1 million a year. I'm making you say a hundred million now. Yeah. There, there's a That's reason. Your next book. That's your next book. Okay. Yeah. So, so up to, up to $1 million. Uh, just a tremendous number of lessons learned. You're, you're going to read about a lot of stories with in-depth, like, why the decisions were made and the, 
honestly, a lot of the mistakes that were made and then the lessons that were learned and the policies and processes that were put in place to avoid that. So the goal here is you read it, if you, know, if you read it, you're gonna learn these mistakes from, from me versus mm -hmm. you making those mistakes over the course of eight plus years. Right. So that that's the goal. Like I, I would love if someone were to read the book and then two or three years later, I get an email saying, oh my gosh, I did you know what you talked about in chapter three and chapter seven and, and I'm at a million dollars now. Like that, that would make my day. That's so awesome. That's, that's the goal. That's really awesome. So now who is this focused on? Is it, it's not just digital marketing, it's focused on who? The book itself? Yes. Uh, so it, it's really mostly my personal journey through that whole entrepreneurial uh, time frame. Okay. Uh, there, there's been a couple different businesses involved and a lot of different pivots involved. Uh, most recently it is with uh, Kevin Daisy, who you said commented. Uh, yeah. we, we partnered about three and a half years ago and at that time we rebranded to Array Digital. Um, so that is, the, that is the company name. We provide digital marketing for lawyers, mm -hmm. doctors, and home services companies. Um, oh, great, okay. I, I think Kevin meant, did Kevin, there was something about a hundred million. So he probably mentioned like a hundred million dollars. Oh, nope, he just said, um, this is what he said, profit first. <laughs> profit first. Profit First has been a, a big component for us as far as managing money. It's it's a book by uh, Mike Michalowicz. Okay. And uh, it, it's uh, since he mentioned it, uh, I can briefly explain it. Um, you know, as, as as business owners, as as entrepreneurs, like uh, there's, you know, we we get reports from our CPAs after the fact usually, profit and loss balance sheets, but yeah, it's it's kind of all like magical made up money, you know. But yeah. when and I mean that because like it may say, just as an example, you, you made $100,000 last year, but you look at your bank and there's like $1,000 in there and you're like, right. well, where did it go, right? Where did it go, right. So as entrepreneurs, we are naturally inclined to log into our banks, our online banking system and look at the balance in our account. And if there's more money than we expect in there, then we start to get aggressive with things like marketing and advertising or you buy t-shirts, right? If there's not a lot of money in there, you're like, don't spend any money. And uh, you start calling all your clients to collect, right? So job freeze, job freeze. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. And yeah. so the, the idea with, with Profit First is uh, that the normal uh, equation when it comes to business is revenue minus expenses equals yeah. profit. Right. The problem is that profit is usually zero or negative, right? Most businesses don't actually make money. It's crazy. I talked before about how you could have a million dollar a year in revenue business. Right. You could be losing money. Right. So it's very uh, simple to do. Mm -hmm. So he, he changes the equation. Instead of it being revenue minus expenses equal profit, it's revenue minus profit equals expenses. And it sounds subtle, but the idea is just just like in um, in, in investing for retirement, shifts. yeah, you pay yourself first, yeah. And so let's say you you don't have a plan right now for for making money or keeping money as profits. So what he recommends is just take one percent of your revenue. You could do without one percent, right? Just just one mm -hmm. percent, no big deal, and put that off into another bank account specifically for that. And just do that for a couple of months. And before you know it, it'll accumulate a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars that you didn't expect to be there. If you could do 1%, could you do 2%? What's the big, I mean, it's only 2% of your revenue, right? Right. Well, we but surely you can ramp that up to a, a decent number, 10%, right. 15%. But you're paying yourself first and then the expenses have to fit in with whatever is left over. Oh, I love that model. That's, I think that that's a model that many of my, myself included, many of the people and my students at the college who are all entrepreneurs and small business owners could follow. Um, I think that it's ex extremely important, especially when something like COVID hits, <clears throat> excuse me, and, you know, a lot of, you know, people in my county have been hit very hard. And, you know, if, yep. they, if you have that bucket that you've been putting one or two percent in, you're not caught and you can maybe pivot online if you're a retail store a lot easier than you could if you didn't have, have that bucket to begin with. So, 
Um, Eric, so with your book, you know, what is like the first thing that you would tell someone who says, okay, I want to be Eric, I want to have, you know, a million dollar journey. Mm -hmm. um, what's the first step that I need to take? Uh, so really the first step is, is figure out what your offering is going to be. Okay. And, and you don't need to sweat the details. You don't have to get a perfect. As a matter of fact, you're not going to get a perfect, no matter how much effort you put into it, you are not going to come up with the perfect business model because you don't know what you're doing. Right? You don't even know what business you're getting into. You don't know what the business is. You don't even know really mm -hmm. what you want. You just have an idea that you want to be your own, you know, self-employed business owner in, in a particular kind of field. But there's so many unknowns that until you just actually start doing it, you you can't you just can't predict it beforehand. Mm -hmm. And so what a lot of entrepreneurs will do is is they will go into analysis paralysis. Right? They'll think about it. They'll they'll write a business plan. It'll yeah. be 50 pages long and they're like, oh, it's not enough. Here's and the 800 turning, reasons why I shouldn't do it. Right. right. And they'll overthink yeah. it. Uh, before you know it, you've got a year invested in a hundred page uh, business plan. Uh, it's going to require a hundred million dollars to launch it. And you just don't do anything. Right. So, right. I mean, I, I have friends that have been talking about starting businesses or going back to school for 20 years and they just don't. Right. Right. So the, the most important thing is just number one, very quickly figure out what it is you want to do. And then number two, go find someone to pay you to do that. So as an example, when I was transitioning out of being an employee into right. being a freelancer, right. I very quickly landed on a website called Elance, which is now Upwork. I was going to say, okay. Yeah. And I, and I was like, all right, uh, what are my skills? Uh, I, I want to do software development. And so I posted, all right, software development on Elance. And um, within like three days, I had two gigs. I had more work than I could handle. Wow. It turned out I really didn't want to do that kind of work. Like the jobs yeah. were not glamorous. They were old technologies. But but I was in the game all of a sudden. I was working nights. I was working weekends. I was really quickly figuring out like what it is I wanted to do, what it is that I didn't want to do, what was reasonable in the marketplace, how much could I charge, could I push that a little bit higher. But I was all of a sudden getting real feedback and making very, very tactical decisions. Whereas just a few weeks before, I was I was just one of many people that were thinking about going into business for myself. All of a sudden, I was doing it. Yeah, yeah. And I love that. Um, you took a, a, a leap and you trusted yourself. You had the confidence in your abilities. I think that sometimes um, that might be holding some people back. They don't really get. And also, I feel like sometimes when you're in a certain company or certain types of corporations, they don't, you don't realize all of the wonderful talents that you have because you just assume everybody has them. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for myself, when I left CNN, um, I just assumed everybody. I had the talents yeah. that I, I mean, I'm not saying I'm amazing, but, um, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but what I am saying is, is, you know, I didn't realize that I could multitask and I could project manage and I did 8 million things in my daily job that when you come out here in the real world, it's, it's literally those things that I did in my daily job are all actually jobs. Each one of them that other people have, I yeah, didn't realize right. that those were, you know, something that was, um, not a commodity, right? So like they were worth a premium. They were, someone would pay me to do them. And I didn't know at the time. So you just get that tunnel vision. So I love what you were saying there as far as just do it and get on Upwork and figure it out, figure out what you want to do, figure sure. out what you don't want to do. Um, maybe add to that too. Don't do anything for free. Um, I, I can't, I cannot tell you how many times I did it. Um, other people have done it. They're like, Oh, it. well, I'll do it for free. And then I'll get a testimonial. Well, that's fantastic. But you, you can't keep doing that. Um, and so I don't know how you feel about that. Um, I, I, I think it's okay to do it once or twice. Yeah. Right. And, and, mm -hmm. and that way you, you get experience. You do all of a sudden have a portfolio, but you have to put a limit on it very, very quickly. You can't be yeah. working for free. Absolutely. And um, you know what? And sometimes doing volunteer work does is great. But like you said, you can't keep doing it over and over to get to that. And now Kevin says that the next book is on journey to 100 million. So I think that you have your next book idea. So yeah, yeah, we, so we, we actually we have a podcast. It's a daily podcast called journey to $100 million. 
Oh. And so about two years ago, uh, Kevin and I decided that, that that was going to be our goal. And, and we, we, we talk about it well on a daily basis, but then also in, in the company, we talk about it a lot about all the things that we need to do to build up to it. And that that's a long journey. That's a 10 year journey. Mm -hmm. So our goal is to get to hundred million by 2030. We have a long, long ways to go. Uh, but just a, again, just, just like million dollar journey, the book yeah, journey to $100 million uh, is just nonstop lessons learned. That's awesome. So where can we get that podcast? Uh, if you go to journey to 100 million.com, 100 is um, the numbers. So okay. journey to mm -hmm. uh, 100 journey to 100 million spelled out. Right. Dot com. Million dot com. Okay. And then we can get the podcast there and then we can get all of your contact information there as well. Yeah. 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 It's, it's all linked back to, um, to our website. So our, my website is this is array, a R R a Y.com. And then for me personally, I hang out most on Twitter and okay. my handle is I am Eric J Olson. So that's Eric, which is E R I K. Mm -hmm. and Olson ends in O N. I am Eric J. Olson. I have to say, I do find that genius. When I saw that, when I was going through all of your socials, I was like, that's just genius. I think I need to, I need, need to do that with my own name. So last question, Eric, um, is I wanted to ask you that if you could tell the audience um, one thing or give them one tip that would help them have a new perspective, what would that be? Yeah, th this is, it's a similar uh, question to um, almost like what what's the one thing that um, helped you get to where you are, right? It's, it's, it's almost like a variation of that question. And, um, you know, what I think is uh, on the one hand, it's, it's a difficult question to answer yeah. um, because there's so many things. Mm -hmm. Usually it's not just one thing, right? Uh, it's it's a, a culmination of a lot of things, um, but, but they all have, kind of a, a similar pattern, um, which, which I think is, is question everything. And, and what I mean by that is, uh, as, as a person, as an industry, as a company, there's so many assumptions about this is the way that things uh, are to be done, right? Yeah. Like as an example, Amanda, you mentioned CNN. I'm sure yeah. CNN, they have their way because uh, that they started in cable, but they're part yeah. of the TV industry and the TV industry does things a certain way. And so you have all these assumed constraints on the way that you live and the way that you work. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really, really important to question all those things all the time. So when someone says to you, well, that's just not the way that we do things here. Like that's a red flag. Like that should be immediately you should be questioning it and figure out like, how do you want it done? So, um, you know, an example, most people, uh, they, uh, when it comes to, to billing for their work, they, uh, they bill by the hour. Um, right. almost all entrepreneurs start like that, but there's, there's a lot of problems with billing by the hour. Uh, we didn't want to do that. We questioned that we started to go to project work that was better, but it wasn't the best. Now we're on uh, monthly recurring revenue. So we have long-term contracts that lasts at least 12 months. But we had, we only got there because we questioned, do we really want to be doing hourly? Like everyone says we should be doing more mm -hmm. project work. And then we ended up at the place that we wanted to be. Another one is, um, you know, if there's assuming there's a lot of business owners watching is yeah. you bill after the fact you'll work for 30 days okay. and then you'll invoice. And, and the terms are usually, you know, most businesses it's net 30 because that's customary. Which means net, net 90 for a lot of businesses, yeah. Which usually turns <laughs> into 95 days, 100 days, right? It's always yeah. stretched because that's just what's, that's normal. And, you know, we questioned that and we started to pull it back. And, and now uh, we don't offer net terms. And if we do, then it's mm -hmm. for a particular client and they get net seven, but most of our clients mm. pay by ACH or credit card at the and also at the beginning of the term. Cause I That's don't want right. to work for free and I don't want to work at risk. Right. And so question these things, question why you do these things. Why do you track time as an example, especially if you don't bill by the hour, why right. do you still track time? Why do you only give your employees one week off? Why not give them unlimited time off and trust that they're adults? Question all those things. I think you just made all of the audience sweat when you said that. <laughs> you know, here, here's another one. Very pertinent right now. 
<laughs> Question why you think you need to reopen your office. Why do you need to reopen your office? Right. Why, why can't you just continue to work from home forever? Amen. I, I know. Although I am sitting in my, my cool office, but yes, I know. But, yeah. you know, but I'm sitting you, here so that my daughter's not bugging me. No, I love you, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I, I agree. I love what you're saying. I think that that's such good advice, such good advice. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, it was fun. And oh, by the way, I yeah. can't wait to have you on my show. Yeah. Which I'm is fine. lunch. We, we have a lunchtime live every okay. Friday at noon. Yours is coming up, not this Friday, but in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad I reminded you. I know. Yeah. Well, no, I know what I'm doing today. So we'll see what you know, I'm doing tomorrow. But yeah. Okay. Yes. When and that's in a couple of weeks, and we're gonna have another discussion like this. So but, that'll but, be but, fun. But more, more around your business this time than mine. Yes. Yes. But I'm sure that there's some way that we're gonna be able to bring in a little bit of what you're doing as well awesome. as what I'm doing. So that's awesome. And I really appreciate the time that you've spent today. I mean, I just find talking to you so much fun and I've learned a lot and I'm sure that the audience has learned a lot as well. And I do look forward to um, continuing this conversation, yeah. even not even just on the lunchtime live, but also, um, you know, just outside of that. And I will make sure to promote that date that I'm on the lunchtime live cool. as well to the people that are watching today, because I'm sure that they're going to have a lot more that they're going to want to hear from us as well. So um, thank you very much. And thank you for everybody who tuned in and who have um, asked us questions. Thank you to Kevin, who also said hi to me. And so hi, Kevin. And um, I look forward to talking to Kevin soon as well. So have a great day. And um, I will see you soon then, Eric. Okay. All right. All right bye.